everyone, Anthony Sequera here. Want to say hello to all my friends at the Cisco Learning Network and a special hello to my good friend David Bloom. He's one of my CCNA students and he is an active member up here at Cisco Learning Network. David and I were talking and he said, Anthony, I love in your videos where you troubleshoot access control lists, but I'd like to see you doing it actually live at the command line. So let's go ahead and take a look at some troubleshooting of ACL examples and let's do those live at the command line. Here we go. So if we look at this particular troubleshooting scenario, we can see that we have a host over here at 10.1.1.1 and this host cannot ping a host over here at 10.100.101 and we suspect it may be this access control list that is the culprit. Well, I built this particular topology. Let's take a quick look. First of all, let's, when you're simulating these types of problems, you want to make sure that before you go in and practice it, that you do have connectivity. So let's go ahead and see if 10110, and let me get on the correct host here. So let's make sure that 10110 can indeed ping 10100.1 initially. So here we go, and we see that ping is successful. Great, so initially, this host on the left at 10.1.1.1 can indeed ping the host on the right at 10.100.101. Beautiful. All right, now let's drop in the access control list shown here on router B. It's permit 172.16.0.0 with wildcard bits of 0.00.255 inbound on router B. If we do that, it should break connectivity and we need to troubleshoot that. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we're going to go over to router B and on router B, we're going to say uh, access list 10 and we're going to say permit 172.16.0.0 with wildcard bits 000.255. So there's our access list. We're going to go to the serial 00 interface and we're going to say IP access group and we're going to say 10 inbound. There we go. So we have the access control list that we saw in our example in place here on router B. Now let's go ahead and retry that ping. Can the 10.1.1.1 host ping the 10.100.101 host? And look at this, we see EIGRP has just crashed. Uh-oh, this isn't a good sign. And let's go over to the 10.1.1.1 host, rerun the ping, and sure enough, we have a major problem here. The ping is quickly timing out. So this access control list that we inserted inbound on the serial 00 interface is indeed something we need to troubleshoot. It is causing a problem for the connectivity. Let's go over to that router B one more time and take a look at it. Here is router B. There is the access control list. Do you see the problem? Let's do a show access list command. And, okay, we can see the access list here. Do you see the problem? Yeah, of course you do. Access control lists end with an implicit deny all. So this 10.1.1.1 host is being denied. As a matter of fact, EIGRP traffic, EIGRP traffic is being denied. And that's why we saw the adjacency break there. Yikes. So we need to fix this up with an additional permit entry, don't we? That 10.1.1.1 host better be permitted in this access control list. Let's go ahead and troubleshoot it then. We'll, we think we know the problem. Now we're going to implement the fix. We're going to say access list 10 and we're going to say permit 10.1.1.1.
and we can go ahead and use an all zeros wildcard mask. As you know, another alternative there would have been to say permit host 10 1 1 1. Look at good sign, our EIGRP neighbor adjacency has been reestablished. We'll go ahead and and save our hard work here on router B and now we'll go over to the 10111 host and we'll rerun our ping and see that the ping is now successful. So, in this troubleshooting example, we applied an access control list inbound to the serial 00 interface in our topology, and we saw, sure enough, it did block communications from host 10111 to host 101001, and we now know why. The implicit deny all we had forgotten about and it did its job, that implicit deny all. It prevented the communications in this case. We fixed this particular scenario by going to the access control list and adding an additional permit statement for that particular host that we want to be able to punch through that access control list. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this video here. I'm going to make more of these for additional troubleshooting scenarios with access control lists, and I sure hope you enjoy these videos. As always, send me your video requests to anthony at stormwind.com. That's anthony at stormwind.com. Absolutely love making these videos for the CLN, and I want to thank David Bloom for suggesting this particular video series.